in the last lecture we added these event handler functions and we also added multiple states in our product form component having multiple states for a single component function is completely normal and you can have as many states for your component as you want now here we also have an alternative so here if you notice all these states here are related to our form that means in all these states we are storing some user input which the user has entered in the form in our web page so here what you can do is instead of creating multiple states you can create one single state let's see how we can do that so here i will comment these states and let's call this use state function one more time now to this use state function we usually pass an initial value but here since we are going to manage multiple states for the initial value here we need to pass an object okay so keep this point in mind when you want to use single state for multiple values you need to pass an object and in this object you can group all your states together so for example inside this object i can have a p name property for product name and i will set its initial value to empty string just like we did here in the same way i can have a p price property and again i will set its initial value to empty string let's also have this p description as its property and its initial value is also going to be an empty string let's also have this p available property which is again going to be an empty string so the initial value is going to be empty string and finally let's also use this p image url and this is also going to be empty string so here also the logic is almost same but now we have one state object managed as one piece of state instead of five separate states now we know that this use state function is going to return an array and that array is going to have two elements so here i'm going to use this array destructuring syntax and the first element will be the variable the variable to which this object will be assigned and whose value will be updated let's call that variable user input and the second element of this array is going to be a special function which we use for updating this variable so here let's call this function maybe update user input all right so here we have created our single state for updating multiple values now whenever the user enters some value in the form we want to update this user input and to update this user input we need to call this update user input function so let's go ahead and let's call it inside this name input handler function so i will comment this code for now and let's go ahead and let's call this function and again this event handler function is used to update the product name which the user has entered in the form so i will copy this here and i will pass it to this function now remember that when we are calling this update user input it should update all these five properties and not just this one property but in this case since we are passing only one value here to this update user input it is only going to update this property and in this case it is not even going to update that property because here to this update user input it is expecting an object this user input variable is an object so we need to assign an object to it but here we are trying to pass a primitive value so here let's wrap this expression within curly braces and here we want to update p name okay so here we are trying to update this p name property of this object but this is now the tricky part here we also need to ensure that all other four property values don't get lost if you would set your new user input state to this object so like we are doing here you would basically dump 
other four properties. So if your new state is an object with one property, the old state will be replaced and therefore the other four properties would be lost. So when you go for this one state approach and when you manage such an object, it's also your responsibility to make sure that the other data does not get lost. And to do that, you manually need to copy the other values which you are not updating here. Okay, so for example, if you are updating this pname property, you would also want to copy the existing values of other properties in this object. And the one way of doing this would be to use this spread operator, which is a JavaScript operator. And you can do that something like this. So first of all, this object is going to have this property. But before that, let's also use this spread operator on this user input variable. Okay, so here we have this user input variable which has these five properties. Now, when we are using this spread operator on this user input object, it is going to expand the properties of this user input object into individual properties. And those individual properties are again wrapped within these curly braces. So it will become a property of this object. Okay, so this spread operator simply takes an object, pulls out all the key value pair from that object and adds them to this new object. That means we are going to have these five properties for this object. And after that, we are also overriding the value of this pname property here. And by doing this, we are making sure that the other property values aren't thrown away and are also part of that new state. And now we can do this for other event handler functions. So let me copy this function here. And again, let's comment this line here. Let's paste it here. And here we want to set P price. In the same way, here we want to update P description. Then here we want to update P availability. So I'll go up, I will copy the variable name and let's update it here and finally let's also update the image URL so the variable name is p image URL let's copy this and let's update it here okay so in each of these event handler functions we are overwriting the property which we want to update all right so instead of having multiple states like this we can have one single state now which approach you should use well it all depends on your personal preference which approach you prefer i usually prefer the individual state approach like we are doing here and this approach is what you will see most often in real world projects but again it's a matter of personal choice which approach you prefer. Now here, when we are calling this update user input function to update the state, here we have a slight problem. And we will discuss about that problem and how to resolve it in our next lecture.